Happy Friday, boys and girls. We made it through our first week back to school. I am so proud of you. You guys did an absolutely great job. You're total rock stars. It was so nice getting to come around into your classes and getting to meet all of you in person and to see you outside with your families in the mornings and after school. You guys did great. And I can't wait to see you back here on Monday. I hope you enjoy a wonderful weekend with your family and friends. And we're going to have a great year at School 5. For this edition of our newsletter, the story that I wanted to share with you um, is a very special one. Um, this story is connected to the events of September 11th, which we talked about this morning on the announcements. And the story is titled The Man in the Red Bandana. And it's written by Honor Fagan Crowther in memory of her brother Wells. And it's illustrated by John Crowther. When he was only seven years old, Wells was given a bandana by his father. It was a special gift that made Wells feel strong. Wells's dad always carried a blue bandana and Wells's new bandana was just like it, only red. And from the moment Wells received that bandana, he carried it with him everywhere. It had lots of uses. It was a cowboy mask, a pirate hat, or even a flag to signal the end of a race. As Wells grew up, he stopped using his red bandana as a toy and he started using it underneath his helmets. You see, Wells was an athlete whose favorite sports were ice hockey and lacrosse. He wore that bandana underneath his helmet to keep the sweat out of his eyes. Wells not only wore a helmet when he played sports, he also wore one as a volunteer firefighter. At the age of 16, Wells again followed his father's example and became a volunteer fireman. He trained with real firefighters and was taught that rescuing people who were trapped inside was their first priority. He also learned how to get safely through burning buildings and put out the fires. It was this training and the red bandana that helped Wells to become a hero. After college, Wells went to work on the 104th floor of the World Trade Center in New York City. Wells loved working up so high. He often called his father on rainy days to ask, is it raining where you are? When his father replied that it was, Wells would say, well, it's sunny up here. But on Tuesday morning, September 11, 2001, it was not a rainy day. The sun was bright and there were no clouds in the blue sky. As Wells sat in his office, he heard an explosion nearby that rattled his desk in his chair. When he looked out the window to see the World Trade Center Tower one building, he could see fire spewing out of the floors right across from him. Wells wanted to help with the tragic situation unfolding in the next tower. Just minutes after the explosion in Tower 1, Wells left his office. To get down to the lobby from above the 78th floor, you had to take an elevator to the 78th floor sky lobby. From there, you could take a nonstop elevator to the ground floor. Many people would be waiting in the sky lobby for their elevator. Wells knew it would take too long to wait for an elevator from the 104th floor to the sky lobby and then another one to the ground, so he headed down the stairs. In a few minutes, Wells had made it all the way down near the 78th floor. That's when another explosion occurred. Only this one was much louder and stronger than the last. Wells ran right for the door of the sky lobby, but he could tell by the smoke coming into the stairwell that there were fires burning inside. Wells took out his red bandana and tied it around his nose and mouth so that he did not breathe in the smoke. When Wells entered the sky lobby, it was hard to see through all the smoke and there were badly injured people who needed his help to get to safety. He found a fire extinguisher to put out the flames that continued to endanger the survivors. Wells immediately took charge and called out to anyone who might be able to hear him. I found the stairs. If you can get up and walk, get up now. If you're able to help someone else, help them. Follow me, I know the way. Many people were dazed, but one woman was in such a state of shock that she could not walk. Wells wanted to help as many survivors as possible. He picked up the shocked woman and leading a group of three others, he carried her down the stairs. Wells saw the air start to clear as they made it down the stairwell. So he pulled his bandana from his face. When they made it to the 61st floor, the lights were on and Wells thought it was safe to send the people down on their own. Wells told the group to continue down the stairs and out of the building. Then he turned around and he headed back up the stairs. 
Wells collected another group of survivors and ushered them to the stairs. Again, he led them down to the clean air on the 61st floor, and he told them to continue to safety. Once again, Wells went back up the stairs. During his third trip to the sky lobby, Wells found that there were people who were trapped underneath heavy pieces of metal. He knew that in order to save them, he would need a firefighter's tool called the jaws of life. Wells followed the stairs down to the lobby for his third and final trip. He found the command center where firefighters and police officers were planning the rescue effort. Wells let them know that they would need the jaws of life in the sky lobby, but Wells would not make it back up there. The damage to both the buildings was too severe and they soon collapsed. No one knew what had happened to Wells until his mother read a newspaper article months later. In the article, survivors recalled being saved by a man in a red bandana. She said to herself, there you are, Wells. I have finally found you. Wells was recognized through pictures by two women who he led to safety. They will never forget the bravery and strength that Wells showed on that day. They will never forget the man who saved their lives. They will never forget the man in the red bandana. So boys and girls, I share this story with you today because I know that none of you were born when September 11th occurred. I know that many of your friends and family were and your parents and that they very much remember this day and its importance. And I share this story with you because many years ago, actually more than 10 years ago, I had the chance to meet Wells's mom and dad in person. And I've had the chance on many occasions um, since then to work with them and to share Wells's message. And I made a commitment to them that I would always honor those lost on September 11th and Wells and that I would share his message with my students. Um, so in my office, um, with this book sitting right behind my desk every day is a bandana, a red bandana that Wells's mom gave me. And it's just a reminder to me of why this is so important that we continue to remember and honor all of the lives lost on September 11th and all of our firemen, our police officers, our rescue workers, our EMTs who continue to go out every day and keep our communities safe. So I wanted to share this with you and I hope that someday I'll get to share this with you in person. But I wish you guys a wonderful weekend and I can't wait to see you again soon.